What's up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup, back with another video for you and today I'm going to show you how to overclock your GTX 1650 Super. It's really easy to do and you should be able to get somewhere between 2000 and 2100 megahertz on the core and between 15 and even on some models up to 16 gigabits per second on a memory. So that's up from 12 gigabits per second. It's a nice little overclock. Um, I'm also going to show you some benchmark results at the end of the video as well. So you can see whether, you know, overclocking is for you or not. Do you want the extra performance for putting the little bit of extra stress that you're going to obviously add to your card? I'm going to take you step by step guide. Um, now, anyone that has been using MSI Afterburner, River Tuner and stuff for a while, some of this video might seem a little bit slow to you. I'm not going to go in depth on how we build the overlay. I will show you it briefly. I'm also recording on a 4K monitor, so I know things might look small at the beginning of this video, but I will zoom in on areas where I am making changes for you, okay? But before we start with today's video, I want to say a massive thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now, 2020 is going to be a huge year for me. I'm building a whole new YouTube area in which to present my content. This is something I've needed for the past few years, and I cannot wait to leave my current cram setup. But one thing I really want to make better is the general production quality of my content, and Skillshare's huge community of online learners has been absolutely perfect for me. They have thousands of inspiring classes for everyone. Whether you're a working creative wanting to learn all new features of Adobe Cloud, a beginner looking to learn how to use that new camera, or an artist that wants to go more digital, Skillshare has a creative class for you. Now recently I've decided to take things back to basics and Brad Newton's Premiere Pro Ultimate Beginner Guide has been perfect for me. As someone who has used Premiere Pro for the past few years now, I must say I found the first part of the course just a little bit slow, but I'm glad that I stuck with the first few classes as there were so many little tips and tricks that have solved mistakes that I've been making for years and this has made the time that I spent editing just so much faster and if I'm all honest just a little bit less stressful. Another thing that I absolutely love about Skillshare is the ability to download classes to my phone. This really helps me out as being someone who works full time across multiple sites and also runs a YouTube channel, the ability to learn something new on my lunch break or train journeys has freed me up so much needed time to spend with my friends and family. So 2020 is going to be a big year for me, but I also want it to be a year where you can learn something new too. So for a limited time only, Skillshare has provided two months premium access for the first 500 people who join in the link in the description to this video below. Now this will give you access to all the premium features including thousands of classes, mobile downloads, and for many classes you also get project files so you can work along with the creative class of your choice. Now after your two months of premium has ended, Skillshare offers fantastic prices on annual subscriptions which can be had for less than $10 a month. Okay, so the sponsor bit is over. Definitely make sure you go down. It's in the description below. Sign up, get your two months free, learn yourself something new. Honestly, I'm I'm telling you, I love using Skillshare. It's it's massively helped me. It's made me so much just quicker about video editing. And it's just made me sort of like analyze a lot of the stuff I'm doing. You know, you don't have to go real hardcore. There's loads of little like snip videos, sort of 10, 10 minute videos, 15 minute little videos on stuff that you can just, just get into. But anyway. You know what you're here for, you're here for the overclocking video. So let's set this back to stock and we'll talk about all the programs that we've got open here then. So the first one we've got here is Heaven Benchmark. This is just great because it just, you know, it's just running something GPU intensive. Um, now I am running this at 1080p settings. I know in some of my older videos where I've got it quite small, people are saying I'm not testing it enough to um, flex the overclock. I've tested all my overclocks extensively before I even consider making a video that I'm going to put out to you for you to use on your own cards. So when I have used it at a lower resolution, it's just been so we can fit everything in screen. Because we're using a 4K panel today, we can have the 1080 window up. I have tried to set the scaling up to make all of these programs look bigger, but most of them just don't really apply to scaling. Um, now the programs you're going to need to use for overclocking, there's a couple of little extra ones here, you don't need them, but this one's Hardware Info 64, we'll talk about that in a second, um, and this is also GPU Z as well, so it's going to tell us some information about our graphics card, as you can see the GPU clock is 1530 megahertz, um, the memory clock is 1500 megahertz, and the boost clock of the GPU is 1755. Now I know what you must be thinking here, what the memory must be more than that is 12 gigabits per second. Now with older GDDR5, you would times that by um, 4, so that would get you 6 gigabits per second. With GDDR6, you times it by 8. You know, 1500 times by 8 is 12 gigabits per second. Now one thing you're going to notice here is the boost. It says here 1755 megahertz. You're going to see this down here. But if we look up here, our GPU clock is at 1875 megahertz. 
Um, so, you know, NVIDIA GPUs, if they're kept cool enough, they run much higher than their boost clock anyway, okay? As long as you keep them, you know, within a certain temperature, 65 degrees, absolutely fine here. Now, for the programs that we're going to use for overclocking, um, firstly, we have, I might as well just put it nice and center because I'm going to zoom in on it, is MSI Afterburner. We'll put GPU Z out of the way for a minute. And MSI Afterburner comes with an install called River Tuner Statistics Server. And what that is doing is talking from this program to that program and making our overlay. There is loads of guides on YouTube, so go and check that out. Even if you turn on the basic features, which I'll show you where they are, you should be able to just, you know, get your core clock, your temperatures, the things you need. This is all a little bit extra and fancy. Um, now, the there is some stuff from MSI Afterburner that you can't get while well, River Tuner. So things like the RAM speeds, the VRM temp and all of that stuff. If you want to really get loads of stuff in an overlay, you can also tell MSI Afterburner to talk to Hardware Info 64s. And then we could literally have everything in all of this list showing up in our overlay. So that, that's just a quick thing. Now, there's a couple of other things as well that I always like to go through as well in regards to, to MSI Afterburn. So there is this button here, which turns it on at startup. When you're when you're first starting with this program, leave that off. The issue that can happen sometimes is we might go a little bit too far on an overclock, okay? And it makes, and um, we need to reboot the computer, but it still keeps that overclock. GPU overclocking is software based. If you've got an SSD, which most of you have now, then you're ending up rushing to get down here and disable it before it starts because it could start the same overclock again. It's a very rare case scenario. It's just something that I've run into before and I know a couple of other people have commented on because I've done a lot of graphics card overclocking videos now. Just a few people have commented. So just, just something to look out for. You don't want it at startup. Another thing as well is if you install a new game, if you get yourself a new game and you know you've ups you've installed the graphics drivers and then the computer crashes um, or the game crashes, the first thing you want to do before you start uninstalling graphics drivers is just turn off Afterburner and River Tuner. It will probably be the River Tuner overlay. They're pretty quick with the updates, but every now and then you get games that don't work. Some things as well are like Vulcan titles. It's always been a bit fishy with Vulcan games. Um, so like your Dooms and what is it? Strange Brigade and all of those people. So I should know that because my friend actually works for the company where they make loads of those games. They're actually quite close to where I live. So I should probably pay more attention to her. So anyway, we, we, we need to, we've got all this stuff out of the way. We need to do some overclocking. Um, I'll just show you quickly as well. I click the little settings cog here. This is where the monitoring is. So all you do is basically go right, you click them, you come down here and then you go show in on screen display, but always make sure you do okay and apply an afterburn. If you don't do apply, it won't save. So that's that's sort of how all this is tying in. You can change the sizes of it, colors, anything you want. We're looking at the GPU clock here. This is what you wanna do. You wanna run it, see what your GPU clock's at. Also, fan speed is in here as well, so you can enable a user to find. Now, if your graphics card isn't super noisy, which a GTX 1650 Super generally isn't going to be, when I'm overclocking, I might just set the graphics card to like between 75 and 100. So you just slide it to where you want it to be, tick it, and then that gives it a set speed because, you know, what we want to find is how far we can push it. We can adjust to a temperature we want afterwards. You press the A, you get auto. You press that, it takes the little fan fan from the uh, settings there so we're just going to leave it at 70 percent because this, this graphics card doesn't get hot it's a, it's a dual fan card with heat pipes on a on a gpu that doesn't power any temperature so it's fine um, i'm using the evga gtx 1650 gaming ultra something it's got a really long name um so firstly we're going to start off with the memory over in the heaven benchmark it's running at six gigabits per second you double that that's your 12 gigabits per second now most current nvidia gpus especially the rtx are running at at least 14 anyway and then you can generally add 2000 megahertz to that so i would at the minimum i would just start off at 1000 no oh, that's 100 i'll we'll start off at 1000 megahertz we'll tick it and then here you can see it's applied so seven that is 14 gigabits per second and we already know gdr6 can run at most that but run this for a little bit and one thing you're going to be looking out for is artifacts. Artifacts, just anything that doesn't look right. Um, really big stutters, you know, parts of the image just tearing, colours. It's an artifact, okay? Anything that doesn't look right. If you get that, then you need to back down a little bit. Now, the thing is, from every 1650 Super review I've read, they've been able to do at least 15 gigabits per second, which is adding 1500 megahertz. 
which is the max you can do in Afterburner. You know, work your way up in little increments. If you get a crash at 1500 back down to 1400, you don't crash up it to 1450. Um, that's just sort of what you do, but I'm, it, this should be fine. This should be fine. Honestly, adding this, there isn't a review I haven't read on a GTX 1650 Super that hasn't been able to do this on the memory. Now you can take this up to 16 gigabits per second. I used, I think it was EVGA's tool and I was able to take this card up to 16 gigabits per second, no problem. As you can see here, over here in GPU-Z, we are now at 1875 megahertz. You times that at eight, that's your 15 gigabits per second. Um, so I would just, because the memory has got such a, you can really overclock the memory, I would just leave that as where it needs to be. You also want to make sure your power limit as well while you're doing all this. Your power limit and your temperature limit is done. To be fair, you probably should have done that first. So I should have told you that first. I haven't made one of these videos in a while. But there we go. We're just going to leave that and see what it can do. Now, the power limit also varies as well. Um, probably won't see it as much on this card. But sometimes if you have an 8-pin card, it will have 125 versus a 6-pin card, what this is. We're not, even gonna, we're not even coming close to the temperature limit. We maxed out the memory and what if we drop like a degree or two? That's just the GPU getting hotter because we've run this for a little bit. Core voltage. Um, I think I've got unlock voltage in here, but it hasn't turned it on. So I don't know if that's just been locked out by NVIDIA. If you have got an option for core voltage, what you can add in here anyway, it it it, it doesn't over put too much volts in. As you can see, it's just not reading it correctly at the moment, the voltage anyway. But what we need to now look at is the core clock. This is where we wanted to add that nice little boost as well. Obviously, that is a boost from memory overclocking. You'll see the uh, benchmarks later. But we need to start, you know, overclocking the GPU core clock. So we've let it run for a while and we know where we're set at around our boost now. So it's dropped from 1875 to 1860 megahertz. Find that sweet spot for you. If your card is slowly creeping up in temperature, let it get to the temp where it's not going to get any higher. I've obviously played with this card for a while now. So I know where it's going to sort of sort of sit so we need to get to 2000 really don't we that's where you're going to be between 2000 and 2100 so it's always best practice to start with a video we're just adding 100 megahertz and we'll just see what that does eh so we're now sat at 1950 and again you'd run this for a bit and you'd see if it's crashed now one great thing i love with this as well because you don't want to just test it in here you need to test it with all your games is that you can actually save multiple profiles and this is very useful because one thing i noticed i think it was on my 1060 and a few other cards is that for some reason some games they didn't they just wanted it back down a little bit um two prime examples which i find over quite a lot on the video graphics cards i overclock are PUBG and star wars battlefront 2 um i, I found that they just wanted like 15 to 20 megahertz less so then i would do one at 80 megahertz for example we'll just go 80 and then i'll just save that to profile 2 and go there we go that's the profile i'll run for those games there we go profile 2 saved but you should be able to go a bit more than that so we'll go one two five see where we get to still saying at 1980 so just going to boost it a little bit more. I know mine for the most tops out at somewhere about 150. About 150 megahertz. But if I bump the fan speed up. It's just that fine line. As the fan speed goes up you'll end up getting a little bit more core. But for me it generally sat around 2010. It will boost up to 2040 and 2050. Back that down because I can hear it. It's doing my idea. But yeah, about 2010. Now I am able to push 200 megahertz. It might crash, so I'm not going to do it to, do it today. Um, it, it works fine unless I'm recording. But I have been able to push up to 200 megahertz on this, but it doesn't work on all my games. And that's where the profile, that's where that situation comes in. For me, the extra 50 megahertz and from running some benchmarks on what I'm getting on the games that it works compared to 150 megahertz, I've decided to just leave it at 150. That is the sweet spot with me. But you just, it's just having having a fine line between all these having a little play do the memory first if you're crashing at 1500 back down you know back down to 1400 still crashing back down to 1350 not crashing go up to 1450 exactly the same with the core as well start at 100 megahertz and then work your way up and just something you feel comfortable with they could be 10 megahertz increments i generally like to work at 25 or 50s and then find the fine line between that but that's that's pretty much it that's how simple it is to overclock your 1650 um, and as you can see um, there is actually quite a nice little improvement as you'll see on the benchmarks in a minute 
Um, so yeah, any questions, let me know in the comments section. One thing I always love on these graphics card videos as well, on the overclocking videos, is for you to post your model, post how much you've been able to overclock it, any performance numbers that you're getting. I really like it to be a little bit of a community in the comments section where everyone can sort of share and it gives a baseline for people when they, they've got a, the same model or maybe a model from the same brand. They can sort of think, how far can I push this GPU? And you're going to obviously really help them out there in their testing. Um, but as always, you know, you do take this at your own risk. Probably should have said that, said that at the beginning of the video like I normally do, but it has been a while. Um, but you, you should be fine. What I've showed you here today isn't massively pushing the GPU. Um, there is, like I said, I have headroom left. I can I can push this to 200 megahertz in a lot of games. I can push the memory to 16 gigabits. I prefer to just back down and sort of do something that all of you can achieve at home. That's what's more important to me anyway than a couple of FPS. Anyway, make sure you go and check out that Skillshare link in the description below. Um, first 500 of you do get two months for free. I think it's something that you're all going to really like. It's a company that I really like as well. Generally, don't let anyone sponsor the uh, channel unless it's something that I believe in. Um, and I certainly do believe in Skillshare. Um, and I'll just leave you with the benchmarks 